Hi friends, I'm Sarah and I'm going to read you the story Beauty and the Beast. This is the story of Bella. Bella is a lovely young girl who loves to read just like you. So read along with me to find out what happens to Bella. So this is Bella, she's feeding the birds. Once upon a time, a spoiled, selfish prince lived in a shining castle deep in the forest. One winter's night, an old beggar woman came to the castle and offered the prince a rose in return for shelter. Repulsed by her appearance, the unkind prince turned her away. He sent her back into the night without another thought. Suddenly, the old woman turned into an enchantress. She transformed the prince into a beast and placed a spell on the entire castle. If the prince could love and be loved in return, before the last rose petal fell, the spell would end. If not, he would be a beast forever. Bella always had her nose in a book. So the villagers thought she was strange, but she was also very beautiful. That's why Gaston, the most handsome and most conceited young man in the village, wanted to marry her. Gaston was certain that Bella would feel lucky to marry him. But Bella didn't want to marry such a boorish fellow, especially one who didn't appreciate her love of books. It's not right for a woman to read, said Gaston. Soon she gets ideas, starts thinking. Just then, a loud bang came from Bella's cottage, where her father Morris was working on a new invention. Gaston's sidekick, Lifu, laughed and called Morris a crazy old loon. He's not crazy, he's a genius, replied Bella, hurrying home. Inside the house, Bella found Morris surrounded by pieces of his new invention, an automatic wood chopper. I'll never get this boneheaded contraption to work, Morris said. Ye yes, you will, Bella said, and you will win first prize at the fair tomorrow. With Bella's encouragement, Morris quickly repaired his invention. Then he locked it onto a wagon and set out for the fair. Bella knew the townspeople thought Morris was odd, but she believed in him with all her heart. As evening fell, Morris wondered why he hadn't reached the fair. At a crossroads, he studied the signpost. Which way should he go? The path he chose grew dark and tangled. Soon he was lost in the forest. Suddenly, wolves howled nearby. Philip the horse threw Morris off and bolted away. The snarling wolves cornered Morris in front of a huge gate. Morris banged on the gate until it creaked open. He stumbled inside. Morris tiptoed inside an enormous castle. The shadowy hall seemed empty. But Morris heard whispering. Is someone there? Morris called. He picked up a candlestick to light his way. Hello, the candlestick answered. Morris couldn't believe his eyes. The castle was full of enchanted objects that could move and talk. They appeared to be servants in the house. The candlestick whose name was Lumer and a clock named Cogsworth led Morris to a comfortable chair in front of a warm fire. Suddenly, a terrifying beast stalked into the room. So you have come to stare? The beast growled. I meant no harm, Morris stammered. I needed a place to stay. I'll give you a place to stay, the beast snarled. Then he locked Morris in the dungeon. Meanwhile, Gaston had decided that the day of his wedding had arrived. He was sure Bella would accept, so he made all the preparations except one. He hadn't bothered to propose yet. Bella was surprised to see Gaston, 
but she was even more surprised when he announced that this was the day her dreams would come true by marrying him. I'm very sorry, Gaston, but I don't deserve you, Bella replied. She opened the door and splat. Gaston lost his balance as he went out the door and fell into a mud puddle. He was furious. Just then, Philip galloped into the yard alone. Bella was alarmed. What happened? Where's Papa? Bella asked the frightened horse. You have to take me to him. It was growing dark when Philip brought Bella to the castle gate. Bella saw Morris hat lying on the path. Determined to find her father, Bella entered the foreboding castle. Bella searched the castle until she found Morris shivering and coughing in the dungeon. You must go now, Morris cried when he saw Bella, but it was too late. The beast lunged from the shadows. What are you doing here? He roared. Bella pleaded with the beast to let Morris go, but the beast refused. Take me instead, Bella offered. The beast accepted with one condition. You must promise to stay here forever, he said. Morris raced back to town, shouting for help to rescue Bella from a horrible beast. But everyone laughed at crazy old Morris, everyone except Gaston. He had just thought of a way to use Morris to force Bella into marriage. Back at the castle, Bella met Mrs. Potts, a motherly teapot, and her son, a cute teacup named Chip, along with other enchanted servants. That was a very brave thing you did, said Mrs. Potts. She knew that Bella had chosen to stay to save Morris. But I have lost my father, my dreams, everything, said Bella. Downstairs, the beast was furious because Bella had refused to join him for dinner. If she won't eat with me, then she doesn't eat at all, he roared at the servants as he paced across the room. Try to act like a gentleman, Mrs. Potts advised him. Later that night, when Bella grew hungry, she crept down to the kitchen for a bite to eat. To her delight, the staff treated her to a feast with singing and dancing. They were thrilled to finally have a guest. After dinner, Bella wanted to explore the castle. The beast had forbidden her to go into the west wing, which made her curious. So she slipped away and ventured up the stairs. There, Bella peeked into a darkened room and gasped. She saw a rose glowing under a glass dome. Several petals had fallen off. Entranced by its beauty, she reached out, but before she could touch it, the beast burst into the room. I warned you never to come here, he bellowed. Do you know what you could have done? Get out. Terrified, Bella ran from the castle. Promise or no promise? I can't stay here another minute, she cried. She climbed on to Philip who was waiting outside and the two raced into the forest. But soon ferocious wolves surrounded them. Before the wolves could attack, the beast sprang from the shadows. Growling and snarling, he fought off the wolves, snapping jaws. At last the pack fled, howling into the woods. Bella was safe. But the beast had been hurt. Bella tended to his wounds. If you hadn't run away, this wouldn't have happened, the beast complained. If you hadn't frightened me, I wouldn't have run away, Bella replied. Then she added, thank you for saving my life. You're welcome, said the beast. As days passed, Bella began to see the goodness inside the beast. And he learned to be gentler and kind. Even little birds noticed the difference in him, perching fearlessly on his shoulders and eating bird seed from his paws. The staff watched Bella and the beast hopefully. Even Chip knew something special was happening. It seemed as if Bella and the beast were beginning to care for each other. Perhaps, just perhaps, the spell would finally be broken and everyone could become human again. One evening, the beast arranged an elegant dinner. 
He looked handsome in his suit and he tried very hard to act like a gentleman. Bella was beautiful in her gown, but they both felt nervous. Something was happening between them and neither one knew quite what to say or do. As soft music played, the beast took Bella in his arms and they danced around the candlelit ballroom. The beast gazed at Bella. He loved her, but could he find the courage to tell her? The beast asked Bella if she was happy. She replied yes, but that she missed her father. So the beast showed her a magic mirror that revealed an image of Morris. He looked ill. Although only one petal remained on the enchanted rose, the beast released Bella from her promise, letting her return home to her father. The beast gave Bella the mirror so she would remember him. He had allowed Bella to go because he loved her. But as he watched her ride away, he howled. It seemed that any hope of breaking the spell was gone forever. Bella rushed home to Morris. To their surprise, Chip had snuck into her bag and come along. How did you escape that horrible beast? asked Morris. He's different now, Papa, Bella said, but before she could explain, there was a knock at the door. Meanwhile, Gaston met Monsieur d'Arc from the Asylum de Loons and bribed him to declare Morris insane. As the guards dragged Morris to the Asylum wagon, Gaston cornered Bella. I might be able to clear up this little misunderstanding, he said slyly, if you marry me. Never, Bella exclaimed. To prove that her father wasn't crazy, Bella showed the villagers the beast's image in the enchanted mirror. He is my friend, she told them. Jealous and enraged, Gaston seized the mirror. Kill the beast, he shouted. Bella tried to stop Gaston, but he locked her and Morris in their cottage. Then, with torches flaring, Gaston led the townspeople to the castle. Boom! The doors shook as the townspeople tried to force their way into the castle. Inside, the servants tried to think of a plan. With a crash, the doors flew open and the townspeople stormed inside, but the servants were ready. The hat rack punched the wardrobe, slammed her doors and the ch chairs kicked. At last, the servants chased the townspeople away from the castle. Only Gaston remained. Finding the beast alone, he raised his bow. The beast did not fight back. When Gaston's arrow hit him, he staggered back, crashing through the window and onto the castle roof. Gaston followed the beast. Get up, he shouted. What's the matter? Too kind and gentle to fight back? The vicious bully raised a club. But before he could strike, Bella screamed out from below, No, she and Morris had escaped from the cottage and had raced to the castle. Startled, Gaston paused. The beast heard Bella's voice and looked up. Bella, he whispered. Hope filled his heart and gave him the will to defend himself. The beast lunged at Gaston and held him near the roof's edge. Let me go. Please don't hurt me, pleaded the bully. The beast had changed. He no longer wanted to hurt anyone, not even Gaston. He released Gaston and climbed over to a terrace where Bella had run to meet him. But Gaston surprised them and stabbed the beast. Ah, the beast roared with pain and whipped around, accidentally knocking Gaston off the roof. With a cry, Gaston plunged through the darkness toward the rocks below. Bella pulled the beast to safety and knelt beside him. You came back, he whispered. At least I got to see you one last time. Please don't leave me, Bella sobbed. I love you. As she spoke, the last rose petal fell. Then suddenly, magical sparkles began to swirl around the beast. He rose into the air, turning slowly in a shower of light. 
Bella watched in disbelief as the beast began to transform. He became a handsome prince. Bella, he cried, it's me. Bella gazed into the prince's eyes. It really is you, she said in wonder. Magic swirls above the castle and the servants transformed back into their human shapes. The spell was broken, but no one was more joyful than Bella and her prince. Are they going to live happily ever after? Chip asked. Of course, my dear, Mrs. Potts replied, and so they did. Bella and the beast lived happily ever after. Thank you.